Greetings, I'm Edward Wong Lynham, also known by my music artist name, Dr. JD. And welcome back to my video blog, How to Win a Murder Trial Against All Odds, Criminal Defense Strategies and Techniques, as well as my new podcast, Criminal Justice Today. The last episodes of this video blog, God's Special Counsel, Part 1 and Part 2, I introduced to you a bit about my background and experience helping those with their unresolved mental health. And as I've helped those people deal with those unresolved mental health issues, as well as how I've worked with those folks, my clients, as they navigate the juvenile dependency system, working with mental health therapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists in order to resolve their case. From there, the second part of that two-part series, I talk about how unresolved mental health issues present themselves in the world of both social media as well as in the world of televangelist Christianity. And in part two of that series, I talked about how I've seen unresolved mental health issues manifest from social media as well as from these right-wing televangelists that we see who are programming people to, instead of what God teaches us to do, which is to love, they're actually teaching a theology of hate and the fact that God, or not the fact, that God hates people who are not part of their political ideology. Specifically, I spoke about those televangelists who actually teach their parishioners that God hates liberals as well as Democrats. And I talked about how these false prophets and televangelists have had a very serious negative impact on our society as a whole. And that negative impact has been the demoralization of the United States of America to where we've come to today. So I'm going to stick with that word demoralization to stick with today's topic. Of course, we know from watching the news that clemencies and pardons are now a big part of the news cycle because of what's going on in our nation right now with a United States president who's leaving. And that's the time when we usually see them exercise their pardon or clemency power the most. So it's a right issue right now, especially since we're dealing with what is usually the controversial pardons and clemencies that a United States president grants to others when they're on their way out of office. But let's first start with defining what is clemency. It's important to understand in the body of these terms, clemency, pardon, reprieves, and commutations that clemency is really the umbrella term. Clemency being the umbrella term means that pardons, commutations, and reprieves are all forms of clemency. Now looking back on what is the public policy behind state legislatures and state and U.S. constitutions granting presidents and the executives clemency power, that power is granted to the executive for what was the primary purpose of, of course, forgiving those who may not have been guilty of a crime, but also for commuting harsh sentences. Maybe someone was punished too hard and the executive then has to step in to commute that sentence. One of the terms in this video blog today that we're going to define and talk about, commutations. But first, let's talk about how this plays out in my home state of Florida. You see, here in Florida, we have what's called the Executive Office of Clemency. Notice it's the Executive Office of Clemency, not pardons and commutations. It's the Executive Office of Clemency because that's where people apply, whether you're in prison, you haven't gone to prison yet, that's where you apply for your pardon, your reprieve, or for your commutation. Now, oftentimes we watch television and we see where people who are already in prison and those prisoners may go before a parole board before they perhaps can get out of prison. Now, in those type of states, the executive power, which usually lies in the governor, is granted to that parole board. So that parole board has the executive power to, in essence, grant a commutation. But again, before we talk about commutations, let's talk about the big one, pardons. As I previously said, a pardon is the granting of forgiveness to someone who has committed a crime. But as we're also learning from watching the news, the President of the United States can also issue a pardon to someone who hasn't yet been charged with the crime. So sure, they've committed a crime already, 
but the authorities have not charged them and arrested them with the crime. So the president of the United States, as well as governors of states, can issue prospective pardons before the person is arrested on the crimes that they have already committed. So they are pardoned. That means on a state level, if a governor issues a pardon, that they are pardoned and cannot be prosecuted for state crimes. However, they can still be prosecuted and arrested on federal crimes. The same thing applies with federal pardons. And as we know, only the President of the United States can issue a federal pardon or any type of federal clemency. So a pardon that comes from the President of the United States can only pardon someone for federal crimes that they have committed. They can still be charged and prosecuted with state crimes that they have committed because a federal pardon does not cover state crimes. Now let's talk about the form of clemency called a reprieve. Now a reprieve is pretty much asking for a stop, a stay of the proceedings, which is usually requested to give someone like a defendant or someone who may be going to prison more time. It can also be for someone who's sitting on death row before they are executed to request a reprieve because they need more time to prove something that may be able to stop the government from proceeding with the death penalty phase. So a reprieve is a type of clemency that is requested to request more time because perhaps you need your lawyers to go out and grab more evidence that you just learned about. So you go before a judge and you ask for a reprieve and you state those reasons saying, hey, we know uh, or believe X, Y, and Z exists. We just need to go get it, interview these witnesses and gather this evidence. So we need, say, four more months to be able to prove a new case or to introduce new evidence into this case. Now, sticking with the same death penalty example, commutation, as we often hear and see on the news, is when, say, a death penalty inmate is requesting that their prison sentence be commuted from being killed or executed to perhaps serving sentence. So a commutation isn't a request for forgiveness. A commutation is a request for a less harsh sentence. For example, as we know across this nation that African Americans are disparately more harshly sentenced to prison than their counterparts. And for this reason, you see a lot of African Americans after they are sentenced to prison request a commutation because they were sentenced too harshly by say the trial judge who sentenced them as opposed to the average white person who may have committed the same crime who got a much less harsh sentence. Perhaps it's more common for a crime that was committed for someone to go to jail. However, this judge took it upon themselves with every African American to send that person to a long, harsh prison sentence. So in those cases, people request a commutation of the sentence. Now both pardons and commutations can also be a request to reduce your court fees, your court fines, and other type of penalties. So you can request a pardon that includes your court fees and fines that, that you would otherwise have to pay, as well as with a commutation because it's making the prison sentence less harsh. It also means making all of the penalties that came with that sentence less harsh. So perhaps a commutation can make all the monetary penalties disappear. It's important that we don't confuse any form of clemency with what we know to be what's called expungement. Expungement is a request to have the criminal offense that's on your record disappear. However, when you request a form of clemency, you are not requesting that the official record of what occurred disappear. You are simply requesting forgiveness and perhaps a commutation along with that forgiveness that gets rid of all of the penalties. Now, expungements are often allowed when you are, say, wrongfully arrested or you go through a jury trial and you are convicted. An expungement allows that entire record of offense and prosecution to pretty much be removed from your record as opposed to different forms of clemency. Everything that happened stays on your record. However, you are being forgiven for everything that anyone can see that occurred as far as a criminal offense that's on your record. Now with all of that said about clemency, 
I want to introduce to you all what we are seeing now in the United States, which is a implicit form of clemency that has seemingly been introduced with this era of President Donald Trump. For example, right here in my home county, of Sumter County, Florida, you have several judges that have colluded and coordinated some of the most egregious and hateful hate crimes that one could ever imagine. And they did it right in the public record. And you know why they did it? It's because of implicit clemency. They knew that the U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Florida, Maria Chapa Lopez, wasn't going to prosecute them for their commission of federal hate crimes. They knew that Florida Governor DeSantis, as well as the Judicial Qualifications Commission and Attorney General Ashley Moody, were going to do nothing to them. These local judges, Michelle Morley, Paul Militello, William Hallman II, as well as Daniel B. Merritt, all commissioned some of the most egregious hate crimes right here in Sumter County, Florida, because they knew they were operating under implicit clemency and implicit clemency that allowed them to commit the most egregious hate crimes for white supremacy that we have ever seen in our United States of America. And to this day, because Donald Trump is still president and because his U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Florida, Maria Chapa Lopez, is an agent of Donald Trump working at his pleasure, she has not done her job to protect the citizens of this county from local sitting judges who fabricate evidence, fabricate people, fabricate events, plant drugs, all things that they can do from simply writing it down on a piece of paper that they call an order and putting their signature to it. So it's not only important that we know what clemency is and how pardons, commutations, and reprieves fall under clemency, it's important that we understand that we are now operating, especially here in Florida, in a realm of what's called implicit clemency, which allows these hate groups like the Sumter County Florida Judiciary right here in Florida's Fifth Judicial Circuit to commit and racketeer the most egregious federal hate crime that anyone could ever imagine. So that's all for this episode. And this particular episode and how I ended it is going to be the perfect segue into the next episode where I'm going to be talking about race, mass media, and the law. So in the next episode to this video blog, I'm going to be talking about the entire history of how white supremacists have used media, books, what we see on television, pretty much everything we see occurring present day to influence us, to cause what I described in the prior episode as to be the unresolved mental health issues that we are, almost all of us are dealing with right now in our nation because of the anxieties, the fears, what's going on, the craziness that we're seeing. It's all planned. It's all by design. And in the next episode, Race, Mass Media, and the Law, I'm going to break it down to you so that you can better understand how you are being influenced by the many factors that you probably didn't really realize was changing you and influencing your behavior and having a negative effect on your mental health. So until then, thank you for watching another episode of my video blog, How to Win a Murder Trial Against All Odds, Criminal Trial Strategies and Techniques, as well as my new podcast, Criminal Justice Today. Thank you again. And goodbye.